Hey guys, Chelsea here from Making Manzanita and in today's video, we're going to teach you how to build a wooden tilt out trash can cabinet and we will be sharing the free woodworking plans. All right, so this is how I started and we really needed to build a new one because our dogs kept getting into our trash and making a huge mess. So that's the genesis of this project. And like I mentioned, we're gonna be sharing the free woodworking plans. So in those plans, you will have all of the cut lists for all of the pieces of wood. But of course you wanna start by cutting all the wood down to size. We're using a combination of plywood and oak hardwood boards. So we used the table saw to cut the plywood down and then we also used the table saw to cut some of the widths of the boards. So they matched exactly the widths that we needed for our plan. And then we moved on to using the miter saw to cut the lengths of all of our boards. And when you're working with either uh, the miter saw or the table saw, and this hard type of wood and plywood with an oak veneer, you wanna to try to use a trim blade if you have one, and that will just help prevent some of the chipping, specifically on the oak veneer of the plywood. But if you don't have a trim blade, you can still make this happen. And I don't have this shown in uh, the video today, but I do have another project where we recently worked with particle board, which also has a tendency to chip and we didn't have a trim blade for that. So what we did for that is you get a scrap piece of wood and you use your circular saw and you can, it's basically like using a sacrifice piece for that trap, that scrap piece of wood. And what you do is you figure out the line that you need to cut and you mark that and then you cover it with two layers of painter's tape. And then you use that scrap board over the top of the painter's tape, uh, the piece of board that you wanna cut. And using that scrap board, all the chips and uh, any chipping and rips will go on that scrap board and then you'll leave that second board underneath intact. So if you wanna see that method, feel free to hop over to our DIY tool organizer project that we recently shared to see how to do that. All right, so next you wanna cut the dado cut for the drawer. And this is just for the bottom panel of that drawer to fit into the pieces. So you're gonna put a quarter inch dado cut along all of the drawer pieces. And to do this, we used our table saw. We don't have a dado blade for our table saw, which is normal or wider than a normal saw blade. So what we did instead is you just run each piece through multiple times and just move over the guide uh, a saw blade width at a time. Then after you do the dado cut up for the drawer, you can do the same thing for the door. And you wanna cut a groove in the door rails and the door styles for the panel of the door to slide into, and that's what Logan's doing here. And again, you just wanna make sure that groove is a quarter of an inch wide, and that's how wide the door panel insert is. So you can do that, both of those uh, things on the table saw. And then we moved on to assembling the drawer. And what we did here is we took the back and the two sides of the drawer and we glued and nailed them together with our brad nailer and we used one and one quarter inch brad nails. And then you can slide the drawer panel, the bottom of the drawer into that dado channel. And then you'll attach the front piece of the drawer. And again, just nail that together. And then you can clamp it uh, and wipe any excess glue off of everything with a damp shop rag and then just set that drawer aside to dry um, and while it's drying you can move on by uh, lightly sanding all of the cut wood pieces that you've already cut and we use 80 grit sandpaper first with an orbital sander and just give it a real light light sanding with the orbital sander we love the milwaukee one that we're using there it's battery powered so it's handy you don't have to be near an outlet um, but just do a light sanding on everything, get all your stickers off, you can see there, and then you can move on to the pocket holes. And we're working with Craig on this project, uh, and that's where we're sharing the free to working plans over on Craig Tool. So we were using the uh, Craig 720 Pro, which is a pocket hole jig that we absolutely love. It came out about a year ago. It's got a lot of uh, advanced kind of bells and whistles if you're used to an older model. Um, this upgrade is definitely worth it. We have a full video kind of showing you how to use it and all the tips and tricks. So be sure to check that out if you're in the market for a new pocket hole jig. And you can see here that Logan is doing the pocket holes on just the first thing that he's gonna put together, which is the drawer. 
or the, the uh, door. And then he puts the pocket hole jig away. If you wanted to be a little more efficient here, you could do all the pocket hole pieces for all of the wood that you already cut uh, because you have the woodworking plan. So just a little helpful tip there if you wanna get it all done at once. So next he assembled the face frame and we are working with oak here, just a reminder. And oak is a very hard wood and it has a tendency to split. So what we usually do when we're doing pocket holes with oak is we pre-drill some pilot holes. And to do that, you can kind of put everything together and then slightly put that pocket hole screw in just so it touches the other piece of wood. And then once you back it out, you can, you'll have a little mark there so you can pre-drill some pilot holes. So that's what we're gonna do for the this project going forward. Every time we're putting a pocket hole screw in, you can, um, understand that we pre-drilled all of those holes. So we're using our Craig clamp table for this part to put the face, uh, the face frame together and this just helps keep things nice and square and uh, level. Um, you can clamp everything down into place, so it's pretty handy. So we are using one and one quarter inch hardwood Craig screws to go through all of our pocket holes for this project. Um, so you can see here he's got the face frame all put together after pre-drilling all those holes. And then he moved on to the door. And again, we're pre-drilling all of those holes beforehand. Take all your door pieces, make sure it dry fits together good, and then use some wood glue in that channel, um, the groove that you put in with the table saw, and you put uh, three pieces of the board together, make sure that door panel fits in, clamp everything down and attach at the pocket hole, the pre-drilled pocket hole screws there. And then just keep everything clamped together while that dries. Be sure of course to wipe off any excess wood glue that comes out so you don't have to worry about that later. And then once those pieces are dry, you can sand everything again. Again, we're using uh, 80 grit sandpaper first and an orbital sander and then we'll move on to 150 grit sandpaper later. All right, let's move on to the actual trash bin cabinet. So take all of your cabinet pieces and you're gonna assemble them together. You can use what clamps you have. The 90 degree corner clamps came in handy there for that first part you can see Logan's using. And you're just going to put the screws into the pre-drilled pocket holes. And here we are using an inch and a quarter softwood or plywood Craig screws. So put all four of the pieces together there and on the bottom, um, we are using a couple of bottom support pieces that are just uh, smaller pieces of wood that go in under that bottom piece to give a little extra support. And then once the cabinet is built, you can attach the face frame that you've already put together and that's already been dried and sanded. And again, you have a bunch of pocket holes uh, pre-drilled here to attach that so you don't have to worry about nails on the front of the face frame. Next, Logan built the top. And you can see here, he's putting the pocket hole screws into the top piece. And like I mentioned, if you wanna be a little more efficient here, you can do all your pocket holes at once. Um, but he's putting the uh, trim pieces around the edge of the top panel there. And you can see there, he mitered the corners so they're nice and clean, and then attached all three of the trim pieces that wrap around the front of the top and then you can attach that top to the top of the cabinet that you just put together. And to do that, he used a bunch of construction adhesive and pushed the top onto place there and then put something heavy on it after he had nailed it into place and just left it alone for a bit to dry. Then you can build the, what we're calling the trash bin tilt platform. So this is the platform that the actual trash can is gonna sit on and that it will, uh, the tilt mechanism will work there using those triangle support pieces. So you can attach those triangles to the bottom of that platform with wood glue and one and three quarter inch finish nails. And then you can attach that uh, bin tilt platform to the assembled door that you've already built using some pre-drilled pocket holes. And again, we're using that same marking and pre-drilling method that we did before to avoid splitting. So we also recommend using a really high quality wood glue here because this connection needs to be super strong as it's the reason that the trash can is gonna stop it as at a tilt. So be sure that you're using lots of wood glue and then just as you get it drilled into place, uh, wipe any wood glue that comes out on the edges or the corners with a slightly damp shop rag to um, get all that wiped up before it dries. And then of course, allow everything to dry before you move on here. 
once dried, you can hit everything again with the sander. We're using orbital sander, starting with 80 grit, moving up to 150 grit sandpaper, wipe away all your sanding dust, and then you can move on to stain. And we are using Dark Walnut here by Minwax. And for the finish, we're using a, a, a spray lacquer. And so you wanna do a, a few coats of that spray lacquer, and then once you have about three or four coats, and it is dry to the touch. You can lightly rub it with uh, steel wool over everything moving in the direction of the wood. And that will just help get a nice glass smooth finish without um, having any rough parts from the lacquer. Next, you can bring it inside and attach the hinge first. So we used a piano hinge on the bottom edge of the cabinet and then attached the door to that. Uh, and then you'll want to grab the trash can that you're going to be using and put it into place and then open the door up to the desired angle. Uh, just make sure you're, you have plenty of room to get the trash can or liner out of the trash can once it's full. Uh, for us, this is about 30 degrees roughly, um, and that's how we designed the woodworking plans. But you'll definitely want to check for your specific trash can uh, because it could be slightly different. So it helps to put something in front of the door and rest it on at the right angle. We used a bar stool for this. And um, then once you get it at the proper angle, you can attach the tilt stops, which are little pieces of wood that allow the door to stop just at the right angle. Uh, and you attach those to the tilt support triangles as shown in the woodworking plans. And we used wood glue and one and three fourth inch finish nails for that. Once you know everything's walk working properly with the tilt out, you can put the back panel onto the cabinet with one and one quarter inch softwood plywood screws, and then work on putting the door into place. So you can clamp your drawer and the drawer face together, and then add that drawer handle to the front of the uh, drawer. And you can use a hardware template for this or a jig can also be helpful. And then follow the instructions for your drawer slides that you choose. Depending on the ones that you find, uh, we weren't able to find the right size locally, so you may need to cut down your drawer slides so they fit inside the cabinet. So if you need to do this, we did it with a Dremel, and then you can simply slide the door into place once the drawer slides are all uh, screwed in. And you may need to do some final adjusting there uh, just to make sure the drawer slides nice and smoothly. And last step, you can attach a matching handle to the top of the door that is used for the trash bin tilt out. So this is how it looked when it was all done in our house. I absolutely love it. It definitely solved our problem of having our dogs get into our trash bin. They, there's no way they can get into this trash bin now. Uh, I love that the drawer, you're able to have a little extra storage. You could put trash bin liners in there or whatever else you wanted to keep in uh, the kitchen where you just need an extra drawer. Who doesn't need extra storage in their kitchen? Am I right? Uh, I absolutely love how it turned out. I love that it matches our dark wood cabinets that we have in our kitchen. Um, I'm really glad that we decided to stain it. We kind of went back and forth on whether to paint it or stain it. Ultimately, of course, we decided to stain it. And I did that because I thought it would be a little easier to clean when stained versus painted. So to style it, I decided to add just some of my favorite cookbooks on the top with a matching plant. If you guys loved this video, be sure to let us know. Subscribe to our channel by clicking our picture here and then watch this video next. And if you wanna build this tilt out trash can, be sure to download the free woodworking plans. They're in the video description below. All right, see ya.